Around nine months ago, I reviewed the Nintendo Switch from the position of a PC gamer, with a lot of my focus being on racing simulators and not on arcade games at all. Anyway, since then my Switch got stolen and Katie loved the Switch so much that she went and bought another one. So I thought I'd do a round two of the Switch. So hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas and this is my 2019 video on the Nintendo Switch. To preface, I'm gonna pretty much completely disregard specs during this review. Here is an info sheet, enjoy it whilst it lasts because we're going to be talking exclusively about the actual user experience over the course of this video. I spent the majority of my time with the Switch playing Mario Odyssey and honestly I've been really enjoying it. I don't know if it's that underlying love for handheld Nintendo games that I've had for so many years or perhaps I'm just less of a simulation snob than I think I am, but the game just seemed to encapsulate me. Now, I was a little bit reluctant to start playing, but after a few minutes, vivid memories of me playing Mario 64 DS Edition came flooding in, and soon enough, I was immersed. I actually regret not picking up the game sooner. I feel like I was kind of living under a rock a bit. The game library has grown to a point now where it's got a healthy array of first and third party titles. The few I really have played have been excellent, with my favourite being Mario Odyssey and Splatoon 2. I definitely hope to play Breath of the Wild and Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy at some point though, with some notable releases since the launch of the Switch being Doom, Dark Souls Remastered, L.A. Noire and Trials Rising, with that last one being specifically important because I spent a lot of my time on the Xbox 360 playing Trials games. Of course there are loads of first party titles as well, including Super Mario Maker, which I'd absolutely love to play, although games are still pretty expensive for the Switch. Moving back to the console, it hasn't aged incredibly well due to its large bezels and low spec. I personally would like to have seen a slightly fuller screen with the chassis saying around the same size but just with a slightly bigger screen inside it and I do like the scaling of this thing, it does fit quite well. I maintain that the Joy-Con are a tad small and it would have been nice to see Nintendo bring out an Ergo Con or something with a bit more grip but that's by the by. The screen itself is still low res and seeing something in the region of 1080p would be nice in a newer model. I think we're at that stage now where we're used to seeing so many ultra impressive QHD displays in smartphones that it starts to make you wonder how Nintendo got away with this kind of res to start with. Not that it massively impacts the gaming experience at all as uh, one aspect that I really do believe is the most important can be found here and that's the colours. Whoever is tuning the panel is doing a really fine job and I still find myself in awe at the vibrancy. It has to be said that the games just make this experience what it is uh, and definitely contribute to what the display can show but damn it's a good display. The hard plastic shell seems to have held up pretty handsomely on this unit, with the only real flimsy part being that kickstand which is kind of designed to be a bit flimsy, and I have expected the Joy-Con to fall apart, but the buttons are still as satisfying and clicky as they were on first release. Battery life and performance are pretty good, it's definitely not blisteringly fast but it never was and I didn't really see any slowdown from when we got it in the first place. Battery life is stayed around the same but because it's USB-C I tend to just carry around a battery bank whenever I need to and I can just top it up like that using the same one that I typically use for my smartphone. You'll be getting around two and a half hours of playtime, which is a little bit less than on first release, but not hugely so, which you'd expect from a handheld device. Since Katie takes it on her one hour lunch breaks and it lasts two and a half hours of game time, she can charge it every two days and it works just well. And considering that you'll typically play this at, in the evening on a TV, you'll have it in the dock and it will kind of automatically charge. So it's kind of more seamless than just plugging your phone into charge. At around £200 used, it's significantly cheaper than both the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro, but pricier than the standard variants of those, and I know it's totally unfair to compare them, but I feel like it's worth knowing before you buy. You can't use this as a home streaming device, which is what the mainstream consoles are able to do. There's still no Netflix or Amazon Prime Video, it's just a games console. And I kind of like that in a way, it's reminiscent of an old school console that's made exclusively for gaming, and since everyone and their dog has either a, a console or a Chromecast, I don't see the lack of video watching services to really be a big deal on the Switch. There are a few games I either can't wait to play or can't wait to see announced, including the new Pokemon games, and more recently and kind of more nichely, Shell Shock Live, which is kind of this worms based game with tanks on PC that I'd absolutely love to see on mobile and on the Switch as I think that's its best platform in my opinion. 
Pricing is still an issue for accessories for me. It does start to make more sense when you can buy a used console for like 200 pounds on eBay. Since you can use the excess cost on accessories, the costs have come down a little bit with the Pro Controller now at around 55 pounds new and the Joy-Con at 65 for a pair. And whilst I did complain before about the limited availability of third party options, now there are heaps and heaps to choose from of eBay, Amazon, Game, the lot. Cases aren't as hard to find either and I would recommend one since the Switch is plastic. Although this one seems to have held up pretty well. Another thing I complained about last time around was that the Switch didn't have optical audio out. And that starts to make more sense now that I think about it more logically because most people go into their TV over HDMI or into a receiver over HDMI and then from the receiver or from the TV into speakers as opposed to going directly into the console. If you think about it, it would make more sense because then nothing else would have access. So at least when you use a receiver or a TV, everything has access to that good audio section. I really like the fact that we get an HDMI output on the Switch casing. I think that the overall aesthetic and overall usability of the Switch dock hasn't aged. The one thing I would have liked to have seen though is a USB-C pass-through port possibly because I know a lot of things these days are being powered over USB-C and it would be nice kind of to see a more futuristic design with that USB-C port although having three USB type A's is certainly not a bother. I honestly believe this is like the beginning of what we're going to see from the Switch. Yes it's been out for a couple of years now and it certainly had time to mature, but I feel like the Switch is so modular and so expansive and we haven't reached its limits yet that there's gonna be not necessarily another console from Nintendo, but just more expansion for the system. If a new video, a remastered version of Mario 64 comes out on the Switch, I'm gonna buy that straight away because I'd love to see that game on here. And some other franchises that we've seen from Nintendo that I would love to see on here as well going into the future is a, a new Nintendogs game. I used to love that game on the DS. Again, with the Mario 64. And Mario Kart, kind of more like the old school Mario Kart. I would like to see that on here because Mario Kart 8 is good, but it's not perfect. And with that, I'm gonna leave you with a yes, you should definitely go and buy a Switch. If you want one, I think you should go and get one because you've got a, a really good game library, especially expansive now with extra third party titles, but also the fact that first party titles are coming and they are getting a lot better. I think I was definitely way too critical the first time around reviewing the Switch because I was coming from a PC background. Whereas now having time to think and having time to kind of clear my head a little bit, I feel like the Switch is definitely more than I thought it ever was. And with that, I'm going to leave today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment, and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. Also, please do check out all my social media links in the video description, as well as my Twitter and uh, Instagram handles, which are the exact same right there. Anyway, I've been Ryan Thomas, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.